Hey athletes. Soon. So right now we're in flower free February. It's day one. Again, hopefully you guys have prepared yourself for this. Um, not that you know you just think today, oh, what am I going to do for flower free February? Hopefully you've been thinking about it for some time. And hopefully, again, and if you need help, email us, message me, okay? See me, talk to me, whatever. Whatever we got to do to make this beneficial for you. If you guys need lists of, Josh, what crackers should I be eating? Or where do I need to go in this grocery store? Whatever. You guys need to help me help you. Guide me in the path that you need so we can be successful. All right. Flour. It's pretty easy to get out of your diet, okay? It really is. It's You, you look at the nutrition label and it, it'll say bleached and rich, blah, 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 gross for you, you know, whatever. Sugar. That's the one that we need to really start thinking about. So, eventually we're going to have a sugar-free challenge where we do our best to cut anything that is sugar. I'll be informing you on what sugar is, what it'll be on the ingredients label, because again, it's not just going to be high fructose corn syrup or corn sugar or just sugar. It, it can be pretty nasty. and it, A lot of companies can go around the rules, they bend the rules, and they lie to you. So, sugar. That's going to be the one that we need to get rid of. Maybe not forever. I'm not asking you, because again, unless your goal is to be an Olympic athlete or to be the best at something, something physical, or look the best, if you want to be, if you want to look better than that bikini model you see in the magazine, yeah, sugar needs to go away. But if you're just trying to look good, feel good, feel better, lose some body fat, gain a little bit of muscle, having a bunch of sugar isn't the right way to go. But eliminating it all entirely, that's thats not what I'm asking you to do. But let's talk a little bit about sugar, and we will talk about this in more in depth many, many times from here on. Sugar. It's a carbohydrate, right? It's energy. It really is. And if used somewhat appropriately, some athletes would say, you need sugar. You need a lot of sugar if you're a bodybuilder, some athletes would say. You train your body, you do a sugar type workout where you're doing sets of 10, 12, 15, doing a ton of work, your metabolism's really revved, and your body's natural want and yearning and desire for sugar goes up, you uptake that sugar and it goes right into your muscle, great. Most people don't train hard enough for that response. Let's be honest, okay? A magazine might convince you that you need to pound 40 grams of sugar with some protein right after your workout. But again, most likely you're not working hard enough to gain that benefit. Sugar. Certainly if you have too much sugar, your blood sugar will go up. Your body's natural response is let's put some insulin to bring that sugar level down. So once your body has burnt itself out in releasing insulin, we call that type 2 diabetes. Your body stops, the no longer has the ability to make insulin, at least under current situations. A lot of times that's coupled with you're morbidly obese, you've got a lot of body fat on you. Body fat is like insulation for your diabetes, okay? If you have a lot of body fat and diabetes, it's very hard to get rid of. So, your pancreas shut down, it says no more insulin production. You now have diabetes, congrats. What else is going on though? Your intestines, your digestive system. So remember, a lot of people for some reason think that digestion happens in the stomach. That's not true. Liquefying of your food happens in your stomach. Digestion happens, absorption happens in your intestines, okay? Small intestines take the sugar, large intestines deal with fibers and proteins and other things like that. So. Sugar doesn't get to your large intestines. You will not poop out sugar. You can put a thousand grams of sugar into your system, and I 
bet you money your body's going to absorb as much of it as it can. Most likely, none of it's going to waste. Why? Because your brain loves it. It's readily available. It literally can go through your small intestines. It doesn't have to be fermented. It doesn't have to be dried. It doesn't have to go through days of processing in order to be absorbed. It can go, it can go from your mouth into your bloodstream in 20 minutes. Gives you that blood sugar spike, okay? What is that doing? So if you get enough of it without fiber and other vegetables and things like that, it will literally strip your intestines of its natural lining. It will cut holes into your intestines, allowing other foods right into your bloodstream, right? So people who maybe have a slight gluten intolerance, a slight celiac disease, now all they do is eat a bunch of sugar and it strips their walls of their natural lining, a little bit of gluten is introduced, and slowly it literally is not being processed and slipping into your bloodstream, putting you in anaphylactic shock, you get sick, whatever. Sugar can make your allergies worse. Also, it can make you have allergies to foods you never had when you were born. A lot of people say, yeah, as I aged, I developed an allergy for blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's because you ate blah, 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 blah with a bunch of sugar, okay? Cholesterol. I love cholesterol. I eat many, many eggs in a, in a week. Uh, I probably keep Minnesota's you know, farms working hard because of how many eggs I eat. I eat a lot of red meat. I eat a lot of meats that have cholesterol in it. Once in a while, I even have shrimp, which is very high in cholesterol. Now, in order for me to do that, I can't have a lot of sugar. If I have a lot of sugar with a lot of cholesterol, the amount of small dense particles in my body will kill me. It will absolutely kill you too. When we mix sugar, saturated fats, and cholesterol, that's where we get heart disease. That's where all of our problems come from, okay? Well, most of our problems. So if all you ate was sugar, you're gonna have bacteria growth in your small intestines that shouldn't be there. You're gonna be sick. Your immune system's gonna be shot. Your immune system is gonna spend more time trying to fight the sugar that you just introduced into your body rather than dealing with strep throat or flu or colds or anything like that. You're gonna be sick as a dog, get mono, and possibly die because your immune system is just overrun. So we mix something that causes our immune system to go crazy. And then we mix it with saturated fats and cholesterol. Saturated fats, fats in general, cholesterol in general, are the only reason you're alive, period, okay? If it weren't for fats and cholesterol, on a, on a cellular level, so your body's made up of trillions of cells, your cell couldn't even survive. The cell membrane, the wall, the thing that holds it together is made of fat, okay? When a new cell is being developed, Cholesterol needs to be used in order to develop that new cell. So you want more muscle, you need cholesterol. You want to retain your hair cells, your skin cells, whatever, anti-aging, you need fats, okay? But when we mix the two together, because your immune system is freaking out, okay? Freaking out. Plus, most of the time when you have sugar, it's going to be with gunky, shitty types of protein, okay? Pizza, let's say. Okay, let's say pizza. No, you know what? Even better, a donut. Okay, a donut. A donut is straight pig fat, lard, plus a bunch of sugar, okay? And other oils and things like that that they fry them in. And we'll talk about oils later. So you get this donut. You put that into your system. There's no fiber to it. There's white flour in it, most likely too. So your immune system gets a response. It's in your intestines. A little bit of gluten slips into your bloodstream because your that sugar is literally cutting its way through your intestines and along with that we have extra fat saturated fats and possibly cholesterol coming with it so regular you know ldl and hdl there's no problems with either of those especially if they're in a decent ratio if your hdl and ldl are within a certain ratio we're good but small dense particles that come from poorly utilized, poorly used cholesterol is what causes the heart disease and the problems. So if you can go, you can eat steak every day. You can eat eggs every day. 
you can eat, you could, if cholesterol were drinkable, you could drink it, just so long as you don't have a bunch of sugar. The moment a gram, a granule, a little speck of sugar hits your body, your body goes into freak out mode, okay? That's where the problem comes from. So, you guys need to start thinking, how do I slowly start to eliminate sugar, okay? How, how do I get rid of it? Because sugar isn't a normal thing. It really isn't. White sugar, bleached sugar, whatever. Even sugar from fruits can have similar responses. But Josh, sugar from fruit is better for me. Sure. Sure it is. Okay? So, I need you athletes to start thinking, how do I slowly start to eliminate sugar? Because eventually we are going to do a challenge. Most of you won't make it three days. Okay? Most of you won't. Most of you will die from something related because of sugar intake, okay? We need to figure it out. So, start thinking, start looking, start being aware of what you're eating. If you're at adding sugar to things, try to stay away from it. If you are constantly having candy every single day, see if you can eliminate it to just one day or limit it to one day. If you're eating lots of syrups and Ketchup with, you know, your ketchup, you can eliminate some of the sugar. Your barbecue sauces, you can get some low sugar ones. Start figuring out how you can start limiting and eliminating the sugar in your life. If your protein bar has 30 grams of sugar, is it really more than a candy bar? Probably not. Are you eating candy bars? Are you eating donuts? Are you eating things that you know have a ton of sugar in it? Okay? You guys need to start figuring out how do I adjust my life so that I can actually live till I'm 60, 70, or even 80.